All right, everybody, and now we're going to take a look at evaluating resources. The big thing to remember is there's no one right way to do it. It's not an automatic task. There are many types of resources you can use in research, and each have their pluses and minuses. Some general good tips, though, are who wrote it, where was it published, who does it reference, who is referencing it, and always check the citations, check the sources. The first type we're going to take a look at is the scholarly resource, the journal article. The benefits of the scholarly resource is they're written by experts in the field. They're peer-reviewed and edited. They have useful citations and sources. You know exactly where the data is coming from, usually. And for most of you, this is exactly what your professor is looking for. The drawbacks include that it's written for people in the field, so it can be kind of intimidating for a beginner. Also, the databases can take some practice to search. Paywalls mean they're not always immediately available, but this is how Interlibrary Loan can help you. Some good tips. Do a little background digging in the field. Use some of these other resources we're going to talk about first. Also, play with search options and keyword options. Get a better idea of all the results that are out there so you can compare against each other better. Some examples, where to find them on our website anyhow, include OneSearch, JSTOR, and ScienceDirect. Now we're going to take a look at the reference material. These are the dictionaries and the encyclopedias. The prose is their basic material, usually written for the layman. They have quick entries, they're good for learning the basics, and they tend to be laid out in a logical manner. The cons, however, is that the information tends to be broad and shallow, not very deep, and there's very few citations to check the information. Those that are more specialized sometimes aren't as good of quality, but there are still very good quality specialized ones. Some basic tips. Use them at the start of your research. Use them as an overview. Maybe check a couple to make sure that they have the same stuff and make sure you're using the up-to-date ones. This helps to guarantee that you're, you know, getting the best information. Some examples include the Oxford English Dictionary, the Encyclopedia Britannica, and the Handbook of Physics and Chemistry. And now let's take a look at the web, blogs, wikis, and news sites. The benefits of the web is that it's written by more people more often than these other resources. Thousands and thousands of people many, many times a day. This means it can cover a lot more topics in a lot more ways than these other resources usually can. It's written in a friendly, popular way, and it tends to be easy to search. The drawbacks of the web is that the citations, the links it uses, the sources, they can be pretty questionable and also can suffer some pretty strong slants and biases and it's probably not what your professor is looking for you to use in your assignments. Some general tips on using the web. Use it to begin with at the beginning of a topic when you're just getting a broad overview of it. Judge a site by its spelling, appearance, and layout. Identify the biases of the site and hidden reasons for the site to exist. Is this sort of an advertisement site posing as a new site? Or is this an organizational site with a strong personal bias posing as a non-biased source? Check those kind of things out. Verify the information. Some examples of websites you might use include Wikipedia, About.com, and Huffington Post. Some other types of resources that you might run into include primary resources, government docs, interviews, both of your own and interviews that others did, raw research data, personal observations, film and TV, music and musical scores, archival materials, and many more. And if you find one of these other types, or you find an odd case, or you just need clarification, just remember, you can feel free to ask a librarian. We do this for a living. 